Welcome to Manta Mentoring. I'm Ray Nothnagel, and today we're talking about rotations. I'd like to start by running a thought experiment. Imagine you're facing north. You walk forward, and then you turn 90 degrees. Again, the same distance you walk forward, 90 degrees. And do that one more time, and turn 90 degrees. What direction are you now facing, and how far are you from the point that you started? Well, let's try it. As you can see here, uh, three dudes, uh, different speeds. They're, they're turning at the same speed. You can see the numbers there. Um, and so if we start this demo over, they move forward and then they turn 90 degrees. They turn at the same speed then they walk forward again and then they turn 90 degrees and walk forward again and as you can see they form a square just missing the bottom side as you can tell on this bottom left thing here but now let's add three more dudes and we'll run this same experiment but with people on a globe and as you can see uh, the, the globe people are all walking at different speeds all six are rotating at the same speed. It's just the walking speed that's changing. You can see the green is fast, yellow is slow, and the red guys aren't moving at all. They have trails so you can follow them easily. So let's reset. And now I'll run the test. And see they're walking up here. Now they're going to turn 90 degrees. And then they're gonna walk forward. And again, and they're going to walk forward some more. And now they're done. So, what happened here? Well, basically, it turns out that when rotating, when moving on a globe, behaves differently when doing so on a plane. And that's one of the fundamental aspects to what we're here to talk about today. Let's run one more demo real quick. Uh, when you first started using Unity, you probably tried to move the camera using transform.rotate. Uh, and so it looks a little bit like this. You know, left and right work fine. You can see, but you can see that it tilts at an odd angle when you do this. We don't want that, so to fix that, I'll be rotating on different axes. So now you can see we can still tilt up and down, but we don't have to deal with tilting at an odd angle when we do. But the player can actually turn all the way upside down. And that's not good. So how can we fix that? Well, we can clamp. So you start digging around and you found a tra transform.rotation.x. And that seems to be what, uh, what value you wanted. But look at what this x value is. I have it being outputted here. This x value is definitely not degrees. It's not radians either. It's not really anything that seems to make any sort of sense. So what's going on here? The next thing you probably found was transform.euler angles. Now, these kind of work. So you can see now, I can look down here and I get stuck at 20 degrees like we wanted. Then I pull up and that's not supposed to happen. So what's going on here? Everything breaks. So this is one of the most common ways that Euler angle problems show up. And there is a solution to this, and the solution is to track our own rotation. I'll show you this code in a minute here. This basically means that you hold on to a vector2 variable, which holds all of your rotation information, and then you apply that from scratch to your rotation each time. And you can see, this works perfectly. We can move down, and it all works as we expect. We clamp, and it all works. So how do we do that? Well, let's find out. So if you just want to fix that one issue, then here's the code for that. But listen on so that you can learn more about why Euler angles are terrible. So here is an axis object that I made. As you can see, it has all six directions labeled on it so we can rotate it in any direction. 
uh, we can see that these are all rotated in the same way. Uh, what it does is, is set the, it sets the Euler angles for uh, differently for every single one of these objects. It actually just loops through every possible relevant combination of Euler angles that I can think of and spawns an object here for every one that's equivalent to the current rotation. You can see the numbers right here are the Euler angles that were being set. So you can see here that although the rotation of these is all the same numbers being put into them and all are different, this one has, see this one, uh, has 5, 95, and negative 25. This one has 5, 95, and 335. This one has 5, 455, negative 25. There's some more. Uh, this one has 174, 275, and 155. And you can do this on your own. These are all valid. These are all the same rotation. You can create two objects in your scene and put any two of these Euler angles in, and you'll see that these are all the same rotation. If I go into the inspector for any one of these and look at the rotation, here these do actually show all show the same values, uh, despite the fact that the numbers with which we set them are different on every single one. The reason is because Unity's native language is Quaternion. And the transform class never saves Euler angles. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yes it does, because I've seen it. It's right there in the rotation. I type numbers in here and they stay there. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but these are lies. The inspector lies, but only because it loves you. The inspector saves the numbers that you type in, but this only exists in the inspector itself, and it doesn't exist anywhere on the transform object. Um, they become invalid as soon as anything else rotates the object, and you can't get to it in code. That leads us to a new question. What's, what is a quaternion? And I've got an answer here that you might not expect. I don't know. I mean, I sort of know. Uh, quaternions are a data structure that uh, holds a rotation that has four numbers that range from negative one to one. And these four numbers somehow combine to form a rotation. I don't understand the mathematics behind that, but I do understand that they are not your angles. And Unity uses these because they don't suffer from gimbal lock. There are a lot of explanations for what gimbal lock is exactly out there. I'm not gonna give you a detailed explanation right now, but essentially it's when multiple axes of your angle lock up and synchronize in such a way that you simply can't do some rotations, like this one on the right here is locked. Um, but the nice thing about quaternions is that you don't actually need to know what they are either. I've been in the industry for 14 years and not knowing what a quaternion is has never hampered me because Unity takes care of everything that matters. So what do you do with this information? The first thing to know is that setting transform.rotation is still okay. You can type transform.eulerangles equals something and it's still perfectly valid. It's reading transform dot Euler angles, which is where we get into trouble, and especially if you're doing any logic with the x, y, or z. Uh, and if you think about it, that's really the only point you would ever have in reading transform dot Euler angles. One thing that you might need to do is to check a direction vector, basically see if some sp part of the transform is pointing in a particular direction. And you can do that with transform dot up and transform dot forward, or transform dot right. Uh, to check to see if the transform is upright, you can just check transform.up, and if it's greater than a certain value, then you are a certain amount of closeness to being upright. I usually use around 0.4 or so, This uh, that's about 45 degrees equivalent. Uh, 1 means perfectly straight up, if you have a 1 as, the, as your value there. but be advised that that's going to be too perfectly straight, and when doing math you'll never quite get there. If you need to know that you're pointing in a particular direction, then you can do something like this, where you have the target direction, which you can get by subtracting the two positions, and then checking against vector3.angle, and that can give you a number that's in degrees to check against. Um, if you have a particular angle that you need to know if you're facing the direction of, then you, then you need to use cosine and sine 
which you can see an example of right here. Cosine goes with the horizontal, sine goes with the vertical, and you do need to remember to use radians uh, because the math f trigonometry functions all use them. Um, and by the way, if you don't have the transform itself to work with, you can still use a quaternion on its own by multiplying it times vector 3 dot something. Multiplying a quaternion times a direction vector actually rotates that direction vector by the rotation of that quaternion. So what do you do if you need to actually know what angle something is pointing at for the sake of storing it or outputting a number? Well, that's what mathf.atan2 is for. It's a cryptically named function, but if you put in your horizontal and vertical, then it will return the radians of the rotation angle represented by those numbers. And don't forget to, return, to convert that back to degrees because, again, these trigonometry functions work in radians. Uh, one more quick demo that we have here is an example of how to count rotations. So we'll be counting rotations on this rolling cylinder. Um, and you can use this same concept for if the player is turning a steering wheel or a knob, it works the same way. So as it rolls, these degrees just keep counting upward and that's without using any Euler angles at all. And here is the code that we use to make that happen. Uh, so what you can see we're doing here, we're getting current rotation using the code that we saw above. We're moving that rotation to be within 360 degrees of whatever our current value is. And then we just add it. And that's all we're doing there. So those are some of the things that you can do when you've learned a bit about rotations. All of it without misusing Euler angles, because Euler angles are terrible. I've been Ray, thanks for joining me. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of Manta Mentoring.